I, so. I, to be honest, I do a lot more hard surface stuff. Oh. Space guns and armor. Oh, so you haven't done yeah. the organic forms? Not a lot. Oh, you no. poor man. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've really put you on the spot, That's haven't okay. I? I need a fire lit. Greetings, fellow makers! Welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about a material called Paltaya. A couple of weeks ago, down here in Renton, I got to meet Kim Beaton. She's a sculptor, and her and some of her friends were sculpting a giant dragon. This sculpture was all done out of a clay material that her husband Warren invented. I thought it was just about the neatest thing ever, so I went and watched all of the videos that they've got over on their YouTube channel, and then when Kim invited me and Brittany to go play in her studio and work on the dragon a little bit, of course, we jumped at the chance. Kim is an incredible sculptor. She's been working with a variety of materials for a very, very long time. And it was an absolute honor to go get to hang out with her, chat a little bit, see some of the work that she's done, and of course, get to work with her wonderful material and a giant dragon. I highly recommend heading on over to their YouTube channel and giving a bunch of their videos a look. They are super useful. Kim is an excellent instructor and you'll get a really great idea of what's possible with their clay. Clay that is now available in the US and around the world. You can head on over to their website and buy some for yourself if you'd like to give it a try. I mentioned that Kim is an excellent instructor and she did not disappoint. While we were there, she showed us the technique that she likes to use for bulking out some of these really giant sculptures using aluminum foil and hot glue. This is an excellent technique for working with her clay, but it can also be useful for a lot of the different stuff that we do with our prop and costume making, especially if you're trying to build out some sort of template that requires a really large form. This is a good way to quickly get a lot of mass without using a ton of material. So without further ado, I will let Kim take the floor and show you how it's done. So I'm going to give you a tutorial in the divine art of tinfoil sculpting. Now this couple of first ninja techniques, how to rip tinfoil. Yes, I know this is weird. Don't pull it from the middle of the sheet. It won't rip. Just pull it like this. And that point you can rip hundreds of sheets rapidly. When sculpting, make sure the dull side is out because your eye will not be able to read that side. We crumple it. We keep a lot of air in this. You don't want to take the breath and the life out of this. So keep it light, airy, and don't crumple it too much. Do this a couple of times. We stole this from the paper mache industry. They have such a good idea going. Tin foil allows you to sculpt rapidly with essentially two things as your armature base. Hot glue, this thing's hot, and ordinary tin foil. We use Costco industrial grade because it's got a lovely stiffness to it. You start, press two together. That'll leave noticeable flat spots on the two. You don't want to waste glue. Glue's, you know, it costs money. Put it on. That's how fast it cools. So you can build up forms like a life-size human figure in about three hours using this simple crumpling te technique. You can also just do that. Works. But a second, a second shape is called a three-dimensional calligraphic line. Watch this. Diagonally. I've now created something that is thin, thick, thin, just like a calligraphic line, but it's three-dimensional. That is very much like the muscles of your neck and the muscles of your forearm. So when you're doing a human figure, you can literally lay that on where it belongs 
and just preform your muscles and assemble a person. Specifically, tin foil is a refined material. You can very rapidly crush it into a recognizable shape, but it can have a lot of drama, a lot of movement, a lot of shaping. Make a little bird. That's a little bird. Just takes a few seconds. But when you're talking about the movement of an arm, the gracile line of a neck, you're gonna get that in this really humble material. Um, oh, something we call leather. Let's say you want an area to go upside down. Like on this dragon, we had stuff that was literally against gravity. What you do, rip off a smaller piece. Shiny side. I'm gonna hot glue this, but the hot glue's gonna flip off the edges. So you watch, I go all the way off the edges like that. Yeah, when that gets hot. I'm gonna fold it in half. Now when that cools, you've got a very, very thin, lightweight, but now unrippable piece of leather. This cannot be broken, it cannot be ripped. And it's about as hard as leather. Very particularly, if you want to go up underneath the space like this, you hot glue onto that, you put it there, it is never coming off. That's, that's useful. Now we have a volume. It's a little rough. And we've got some crevices and it's a bit irregular. You can make smaller pieces of tin foil, fold them into those irregular areas, hot glue them, And now, I can start subtly shifting that inward to create a shape. Don't take all the air out of this, because it will rapidly become very dense. Now, if you're using paper mache or Altaya, or what's that name of that box shape? Or uh, Warbler. Warbler. Warbler goes over the top of this stuff really beautifully. But keep it so there's air in there, just in case, halfway through a process, you need to make a change, you can still compress that even more. So I'll make a large human shape and I'll tap it till it becomes about the size of a person and then I'll compress it a little bit more so when you put clay or paltaya or warbler over the top of that, it will come up to the right size. So keep air in your sculpture because a an armature should never bully you into making bad decisions, so you have to have to show it who's boss. Thank you so much, Kim, for showcasing such a wonderful technique that could be useful for a variety of creative disciplines. Of course, while we were in the studio, Kim mixed up a batch of her pal Taya so that Brittany and I could play around a little bit with the dragon. Now, I don't do a ton of organic sculpting, so this is a little bit outside my comfort zone, but like I said, Kim is a great teacher. We mixed up a bunch of clay, added a base layer to the existing dragon form, drew on some lines where all of those scales are gonna go, and then using a small trowel, we would lump off a little piece of the clay, stick it down to the surface, and then slowly refine the form a bit until it looked as close to a dragon scale as I could muster. This was done over and over again to get all of these scale shapes on the tail part of the dragon. With the basic forms bulked out, we could use that same trowel to go in and refine our details a little bit. Once we were happy with how they looked, Kim showed us how to use a cheap old chip brush to add a little bit of texture to the dragon scale surfaces. She specifically pointed out that it's good to have a lot of different types of textures. So we used the chip brush to get it a little bit of a matte finish on there. And then we went back in with the trowel to add a little bit more of a shinier surface to some parts of the scales. Overall, this was a really great and educational experience. I highly recommend that you guys reach out to your local artist communities, see what's out there, see if you can make some friends and learn some new techniques. I, for one, kind of wish I dragged myself out of my basement earlier and met Kim before uh, before as recently as a couple weeks ago. It would have been great to know her uh, and work on that dragon while they were just getting started. Now, as far as the clay, the Paltaya clay, that is for sale right now, 
I'm trying to figure out what it is that I might use it for down here in the shop. It was created for large sculptures. It's a great medium for anything that needs to be really big. It's incredibly durable and strong. It's so strong that Kim could stand on the dragon without any risk of it breaking. And it's largely meant for outdoor sculptures. Once these things are done and dry, they can sit outside in the weather and not get eaten away by mother nature. It has a really great long working time, about two hours, and it takes a few days to fully cure, which means you can keep adding to it, you can keep modifying it and refining it as time goes. Also a big factor, it's completely non-toxic. This is a huge deal for any time you're working with a lot of material, especially for anything really big or if you're in a small, not well ventilated area, it's excellent idea to work with materials that are as non-toxic as possible. So what do what do you guys think? Do you have any ideas how you might use this material for your prop and costume making projects? If you have any fun ideas, please let me know down in the comments below. I want to get some ideas because I'm going to get my hands on some of this stuff and do a bit of experimenting. Hey, thanks you guys so much for checking out the video. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I try to get back to every single one of you. If you haven't already, like I said, head on over to the Paltaya YouTube channel. Give those videos a look. They're really fantastic. And I'm trying to talk Kim into making some more new videos. If you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. We have prop and costume making videos coming out every single week. And I've got just a couple more videos left in the Destiny Scout Rifle video series that's going on. It's all 3D printed. That'll be coming out here in the next month. I'll be finishing that up. I'm really excited to share that with you guys. If you're looking to keep the video train going, we got a couple more videos here you can check out, including the talk I had with Kim a couple weeks ago at Renton City Comic Con. Thanks again so much for checking out our videos, you guys. We'll see you all in the next video.